Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're going to take an in-depth look at the Kislev Tech Tree in Total War Warhammer 3. Now this guide will come in three parts, as we'll first take a look at the general structure of the entire tech tree, before going through all 57 individual technologies, looking at their bonuses as well as their in-game lore descriptions. Then finally at the end, we'll finish with a compilation of all the bonuses from the entire tech tree, Divided down by category, so you can easily identify all the bonuses associated with individual unit types, or faction-wide effects, or economic effects, and so forth. And getting things started, the Kislev Tech Tree is subdivided into four sections, titled The Land, Kislev, Erengrad, and Prague. Now, for the three sections with city names in their title, the bottom six technologies are locked until you have researched any five of the above technologies, and hold the namesake city. As for the land, you have 12 technologies split into three sections of four tech each, where the second section becomes unlocked once you have researched two technologies from the first section, while the third section unlocks when you have three technologies from the second section researched. And that's pretty much how the Kids Life Tech Tree works in terms of their structure, as we can start looking at individual technologies, starting with cold storage from the land section. Now this technology will take four turns, and the in-game lore description says, in the endless steps, nothing will grow in the gripe of winter. So preserving food for the long haul is not just practical, but essential. And this will give us growth plus five in all settlements. Pretty decent and useful tech here. Moving on to the hooked axe blade, this will also take four turns, and we have this ingenious design not only enables efficient deflection of blows, but also can be hooked around an opponent's shield or haul a rider from their mount. And this will provide all Kosar units plus four melee defense. Then moving on to leather treatment, which also takes four turns, we have hides and skins are tanned to protect and make them more durable in the harsh northern conditions. Missile resistance plus 5% for horse archers and Kosovite Darvishes, which are the two cheapest cavalry unit. One is the missile cavalry, one is the melee cavalry. And finally, we have ice sculpting, which also takes four turns. An important skill for acolytes of the ice court is learning to carve and shape its abundance through manipulation of the highly volatile ice magic. And this is one of the four technologies that will help you unlock your ice court mechanic. This one will give you the Frost Maiden hero slot, as well as plus one hero capacity for Frost Maidens. There will be two Frost Maiden and two Ice Witch slots, their heroes and lords. And then once we have two from this section, we can move on to the second section, which start out with the Gospardar Governance. And this will take five turns. It is thought, the natural state of affairs, that the more civilized southern tribe should rule over the simple people of the north, and this gives a construction cost discount of 25% for the hallowed wood building, which is an infrastructure building type available to Kislev. And for those who are unfamiliar with Kislev lore, we'll talk about it a little bit here, as Kislev is made up of two tribes that united together. The northern tribe are called Ungols, and they're real-world inspiration comes from sort of the steppe nomads, uh, Kozaks, for example. That's why we have all the Kozak unit and Kosar units in the roster. And their name also is very close to the word Mongols, which are the Tartar people uh, that sort of controlled Russia for quite a long time, as we sort of have this faction that represents sort of the Slavic people being the Gaspondars. And they're the southern tribes that are supposedly more civilized, more nobility, who is ruling Kislev, and there is definitely internal tension between the Ungol northern tribes and the southern Gospodar tribes. But right now, that conflict is being shifted away from two different tribes to a matter of state versus religion, where Katrin is trying to rule as the Tsarina, and Kostaltin is trying to gain control as head of the Great Orthodoxy. So in the background there, there's still this north-south divide uh, between the Gaspardars and the Ungols, just to give some background here. And then moving on, we have the Ursonite Cult Customs. This will take five turns and cost 200 devotion. Devotion is the unique resource for Kislev, and this is one of the four technologies that will upgrade the invocations. This one obviously Urson's invocation, 
And we have the ancient ways of the old religion are embedded and enmeshed within the life of ordinary Kislevites who told the land. And this will upgrade the Urson invocation from the motherland mechanic, and it will increase the melee defense of all armies by five points. The in-game description doesn't tell you how many points, but I researched all of these, so this one gives five points of melee defense for all unit. It's not bad. It's a pretty decent boost compared to a few others. It's weaker than some, but stronger than others. Now, there are four gods featured in-game for the Kislev faction. Ursin being the most important one, as he's central to the story arc. He's represented by the bear, who is captured by Bellacor that we must rescue. And he can have a human form as well in the lore. He's a key god for the Kislev people. Uh, there are many statues of bears, and bear has a very big importance. We can tell from all the units as well. Bear riders, bear sleds, elemental bear creatures. So it's just a very important uh, god for the Kislev people. And he's supposed to be this bear that roars when he comes out of his winter hibernation that signals the spring. And he's been missing for so many years because when Boris was killed, quote unquote killed, we know he comes back. He was not protected during his hibernation, and that's how Bellacor is able to capture him. And now we must try to rescue him as he's imprisoned. So moving on past this, we have toughened, we have toughened stanchions, and this will take also five turns. The added downforce provided by these upright wooden bracings make for much sturdier sled, which are far less likely to overturn during swift maneuvers on the ice. And this will give us plus 10 extra armor for the war sled unit. There's a heavy and light variant. Both of them will get the 10 point of armor. And then moving on to Troll Country Pathfinder, which takes six turns. So five turns for everything else here. This one takes six turns. Those who lose their way while traversing Troll Country tend to end up dead. Some men of Kislev has spent their lives learning all the safe routes through the region and all armies will gain 5% campaign movement range. Quite a useful little buff here. And then moving on to the final section, we start with Breach Loaders, and this will take six turns as well. It is certainly advanced by virtue of being both faster and many magnitudes less dangerous to load firearms at the opposite end to their muzzles. And for this, we get 10% extra ammo for armor Kussars, and their reload time will be reduced by 10%. And moving on, we have the Dwarven Anvils, which will take six turns as well. If you want the very best smithing equipment, there's only really one race to buy from. For the Dwarves, such things are in their very blood. And this will improve the armor for the Wing Lancer unit, interestingly enough. Basically, you get better Anvils to craft better armor. And then moving on, we have the Devotional Creed. This will also take six turns. Ceremonies such as these are crucial when living so close to chaos waste. Least the ruinous one, insidious corruption infest and disrupt the land. This will stop or decrease the chance of plague spreading by 25% and increase devotion gains from fighting chaos factions by 10%. And then finally, we have Ice Rite, which also take six turns. Special rites taught by ice witches set an essentially tough permafrost on the land, an armored sheen for the elements, and this will increase 5% physical resistance for those elemental bear units we talked about earlier, which are entirely made of ice. And that's going to wrap it up for the land as we move on to Kislev, and we start with ice cord indoctrination. Now, as you can see from the nine technologies on top, there are three sections of three tech that is linked. So if you want the ones below, you must get the one above. For this one, it will take four turns. This one's related to the Ice Court again, as you can tell by the name. Candidates for membership of the Ice Court must be thought and instructed in its myriad customs and rites if the next generation of Ice Maidens and Witches is to rise. And this will give us a slot for the Ice Witch Lord. So this is a difference here. There is no increased capacity for Ice Witch because there are Lords, as there are no limitation to how many Lords you can have, aside from the supply line mechanic, which will make everything pricier for each of the Lords you add to your faction on the field. And moving on from this, we have the Capital Barrack Renovation, which will take six turns. 
Renovating the vast abandoned wing of the Boca Palace will provide additional accommodation to barrack many rotas of loyal soldiers. And we will change the relief column commandment, which is what you get when you control a whole province. And you get additional minus 5% to recruitment costs. The base discount is 10%. This will change it to a minus 15% discount to recruitment cost in that province. Finally, Festival of Urza. This will take eight turns and 200 devotions, as once again, we have another one that will upgrade an invocation. This gathering is an important date in the Ugo calendar, upon which the strength of the bear god and the protection he gives the common folks of Kislev is celebrated citywide. So the name of this tech and the lore is a bit interesting, as it refer once again to Urson, but this one actually deals with Tor. So Tor is another god, and from the name, you can guess who inspired this god, as this is the god of lightning. And it's going to give us a bonus of 3% melee attack for all units, going from 5% to 8%. It's also kind of weird how they use percentage here, because it's technically not a percent, they're just adding 3 points. Well, if you consider melee attack and melee defense, both of them are quote-unquote percentages, but it's not displayed that way in-game. So it's kind of weird that they actually use percentage for this one, but in essence you get 3% more. Then moving beyond that, we have the Ice Cut Collars. This will take 4 turns. These intricate designs are woven from strips cut from the pelts of young beasts, perhaps slain for the tenderness of their meat. And this is actually a boost for the Snow Leopards. 15% weapon strength as you add a collar onto them hopefully not from their own beast. And then we have Iron River Stone. This will take six turns. Stone quarried from the mineral-rich shores of the Iron River is of vastly superior quality, so supplies must be kept constant if the city is to expand at pace. And this will give us a 10% discount to all resource-producing building. These are the special resources you can use for trade. Certain cities with Unique icons will depict which one of the resource you have in that location. And then moving on, we have improved empire relations. This will take eight turns. They may seem like soft southerners, unworthy of camaraderie, but the empire's vast resources, and therefore its friendship, are essential if Kislev is to guard the northern marches from ruin. And this will give us 20 points of diplomatic relations with all empire faction. Quite useful, actually, as we are bordering quite a few empire factions to our south. Then we have Comfort Essence, which takes four turns, time dedicated purely to rest, but also knowledge of healing herbs and method needed to extract the best from them are key to a casualty survival, and this will give us 2% casualty replenishment rate increase faction-wide. And then we have Zara Loyalty Right, which will take six turns. It is only right that those who serve as the Zara's bodyguard are proven loyal beyond doubt, and will get four points of leadership for all Tsar Guard units. Finally, we have the Gosponder Bloodline. Proof that your line extends from the noble Gosponders give a distinct advantage in every quarter of Kislevite life, and Lord Recruitment Rank increased by two points. So, no surprise here, we have a reference to the Gosponders again, they're more of the nobility ones, they're ruling Kislev, and we see that Lords get plus two rank here. Then if you have 5 tech from any of the nigh above, they don't have to finish any roll or column. You can pick the easiest 5 by getting the 3 atop, plus 2 from the second roll, and then you can move on to the final 6 down below, which are not connected. You can go for any of them. And we can start with the orthodoxy interdiction. When the water comes down, there is no possible reason to avoid duty that would not be considered a dishonorable and shameful shirking of responsibility. And this increases global recruitment capacity by two. Keyword here is global. So the global recruitment capacity goes up by two and not local. There is a separate one for local later on, and this tech will take us 10 turns to research. Moving on to aggressive cultivation, also 10 turns. Forming deep gorges to build up ice into great shards or planting lots of iron briars and sharp Thorny Scrub ensures the elemental guardians are created with bite. And this is a depiction of the ice bear or the elemental bear unit, and you get 10 points of melee attack. Finally, mesh layers, also 10 turns. Several layers of finely wrought ultra-thin metal skin bound together 
provide the strength to withstand axe or hammer blows and deflect arrows or spear points when launched acutely. And this will improve missile resistance 10% for Kosars, Armor Kosars, Strozzi's, and Ice Guard units once they reach rank 7 or above, which is the Gold Chevron. So once you get that Gold Chevron, you gain 10% additional missile resistance on a wide variety of units here. Then moving on, we have the Bear Baiting, 10 turns as well, angering the Great Beast just enough to make them aggressive, but not so much that they kill you, is a valuable skill to master. And this picks up the Frenzy skill for War Bear Rider units and increase the base damage by 10%. That's the effect Frenzy. Frenzy require your leadership to be higher than 50% of base to be enabled. Basically, you get 10% damage, 10% additional charge, 8 points of melee attack, and immune to psychology. Very good bonuses. And moving on, we have the Kislevian Ducat. Men able to accumulate Ducats are truly the major players among the city's burgeoning merchant class. So coins. And we have income from trade good producing buildings, 100%. So this is the special resource producing buildings. It's called trade good now because you can trade them. And then we have imperial efficiency. The empire has developed many production processes to their optimal effectiveness, but security is lax or at least insufficient to prevent enterprising Kislevites borrowing the best of them. And we're going to get 5% additional income from all buildings by stealing the empire's production processes, basically. And this also takes 10 turns, as all the ones at the bottom takes 10 turns. And then moving on to Erengrad, we start with the Ice Court Disciple again. It's structured very similarly. We start out with one, the Ice Court Mechanic, and the third one's always one, the Invocations. So this will take four turns. Candidates for membership of the Ice Court must be thought among the young of Erengrad and indoctrinated into its myriad custom and rights. And this unlocks the Frost Maiden Hero, and we get one hero capacity for it. Then moving up to currency exchanges, we have a six turn tech here. The ability to exchange the differing coinage of the old world's many nations will give Erengrad advantage over the other port cities. And this will change the Waken the Land commandment by giving you 2% additional income from 5% to 7%. Not a bad boost, basically banking with currency exchange here in the port city of Erengrad, a little bit of flavor text for the city that this tech section belongs to. And then we have the Selyak Cult Customs, which will take 8 turns and 200 devotion. Worship of the Goddess of Healing and Comfort instilled both common sense of nurturing care in the people of Erengrad that they might look out for each other in the frozen, wintry wastes. And this will upgrade the Selyak Invocation, and this has many changes. It will improve casualty replenishment rate, growth, and control for all provinces, it's 10 point change for growth from 20 to 30. There is no previous control bonus on this invocation, so just plus two. And there's a 7% casualty replenishment that will boost you from 8% to 15%. This one, as you can see, is quite a decent boost. And Soyak is sort of the mother goddess for Kislev, as it is for healing and comfort. And I believe she can also take the form of a white bird, if I'm not mistaken. But like I said, these bonuses are not equal. The plus five points of melee defense plus three points of melee attack does not compare to something like this where you get 10 growth, two control, and 7% casualty replenishment. Now, of course, invocations cost devotion and only last 10 turns. So definitely consider carefully which one you will upgrade and which one you will use. And then moving on to Pirate's Weapon. Takes four turns. The Old World's second largest trading port provides safe berth to pirates and pirateers in return for knowledge of foreign martial advances. So we're getting some weaponry from the pirates by allowing them to dock. 10% ammunition for Kosars and 10% reload time reduction for Kosar units. And then we have Grom's Telemetry, which is a six turn tech. There are many scientific intricacies that govern effective arms craft. Little Grom can be adjusted and primed for maximum efficiency as well as devastation. And we actually get 15% range boost for the Little Grom unit, which is the lone artillery unit for the kids left roster. And then we have the Harbor Cartel, which takes eight turns. The formidable league of port merchants exercise the real power over the great city's economic growth, and we get 5% additional trade resource produced. 
And then moving on to Lin's Crafter for four turns, it takes complex machinery, the keenest eye, and considerable skill to fashion lenses good enough for use in high-grade telescope and spy glasses. And we get campaign line of sight of 10% for all characters. And then moving on to North Hatred, six turns. Ever since they sacked Erengrad, leveling much of the city, and slaughtering a large proportion of the populace, it's an understatement to say the survivors have no love for the barbaric Northmen, and we have plus four leadership for everyone fighting against Northka, and plus four melee defense for everyone fighting against Northka factions. And then moving on to Harbor Master's Authority, which takes eight turns. The Harbor Master is responsible for all aspects of custom and excise, right the way down to tariff and duties levied upon foreign traders. And we get plus 5% income from trade. And then once we picked up five technology from above and hold the city of Erengrad, we can pick any of the six in the following, which will all be 10 turn tech, starting with Fortify the Land. A fertile motherland, fortified by crop rotation and lots of bare manure, will provide a replenished spirit should the elements be called to the nation's defense. And we actually get 12% replenishment rate for the elemental bear unit, which is getting a lot of bonuses if you notice. And then we have improved harbor defenses. The positioning of sizable gabions allow for the swift construction and rearrangement of Erengrad's coastal defenses, so gun emplacements and forts can be scaled up or down according to the level of threat faced. And we get 500 points of extra defensive supplies per turn. When under siege, it's worth one tower each if you want to think about it that way. And then for Harbor Watch, give a man a spear and he may run. Give a man a spear, a gun, and some idea of how to use them, and you have the beginnings of a useful, even professional port patrol service. And we get plus one rank for all infantry and cavalry units, which is pretty wide here. And then we have the Erengrad Code. The minutiae of these regulations ensure that Erengrad's port is run in the most efficient way possible, and it's a simple 25% income from ports. And then we have Arabian Fire, the secret of chemistry learned in the distant east, bringing Little Grom's explosive anger to fiery corporal life. And it adds a flaming attack to the Little Grom unit, and we get 15% ammunition increase for war sleds and Little Grom. It's an interesting name here, as we had the Greek fires in history, and now we have the Arabian fires here. And finally, we have the Port Merchants Guild. The guild ensures that good and money flow freely from ports into the heart of the city and the right people profit, and this will add 15 points of growth faction-wide. And that leaves us with Prague as we start with Ice Court Control, which is a four-turn tech. Candidates for membership of the Ice Court must be thought and instructed in Smyrad customs and rights if the next generation of Ice Maidens and Witches is to rise. And this is a repeat lore here, as it will also unlock a Ice Witch lore training slot for the Ice Court mechanic, completing all four slots for the Ice Court. And then moving on to the Witch Hunters Conclave, Prox's Witch Hunters are as zealous as their Empire counterparts due to the city's troubled history. Additional assemblies will see more heretics rooted out. And this six turn technology will change the purge the steps commandment by giving it minus two corruption reduction from zero to negative two. Didn't have any corruption reduction before, but now it does. And then finally, we have the Dawes cult customs. The god of fire and sun is as old as life itself, so his worship is as much a part of Kislevite's life as breathing and eating. And we meet our final invocation for Dawes, which is the fire and sun god taking the shape of. A man, oftentimes, it's an 8 turn 200 devotion once again, and it will change the Motherland's Dawes invocation by giving income from all building an increase, income from trade an increase, and the land awakening army ability to all armies. And it's a 5% trade income increase that will change from 15% to 20%, a 4% income from all building increase going from 8% to 12%, and the land awakens allow you to summon an elemental bear for each army, for each battle in the 10 turns that this invocation is on, which is super powerful because the elemental bear is super strong. Obviously a summoned creature will degrade, but it's still a very nice bonus. The income is not half bad either. And then we go to Glacial Prism, which is a four turn technology. 
The Ice Witches, by use of their most dangerous magic, can construct great geometries to range and direct their devastating magical attacks. The winds of magic power reserve change increase by 15% when it's increasing. So if it is increasing, then it gets another 15% bonus. And ice guards get 10% ammunition because they have those ice arrows. And then we have call to prayer, six turn tech. The cursed city is home to the great orthodoxy whose grand patriarch leads the faithful from the path of madness and mutilation. So it is the cursed city. That's the nickname for Prague. And we get 15% hero action cost discount for Patriarch here. Finally, we have Prague Remembers, 8 turn tech. At least we forget those who lost their minds and lives to the Dark Gods. Terrible advance. We get minus 2 corruption for all provinces. And then we have Improved Lookout, back to 4 turn tech here. Better telescopic aids provided by Astromancers of the Empire allow those stationed in Prague's northern watchtowers to issue an earlier warning should Chaos Invaders return. And we get plus one local recruitment capacity for all provinces. So earlier there was a plus two global, this is a plus one local. And then we have Strozzi Arsenal, six turn tech. Ever on a war footing, least the Dark Gods turn their ruinous gaze upon Prague once more, the elite guards store many of their black powder rifles gear for the call to Existential conflict may come at any moment, and we get 10% ammunition for Strozzi's, and their missile damage, armor piercing damage increased by 5% for Strozzi unit as well. Finally, we have Prague veterans, 8 turns. These men of ancient Ugal blood are the hardened masters of war in the vast oblast, and this is a 4 point leadership when defending for everyone. And this is a reference to a couple things. Remember, the Ugal tribes are the ones from the north. Prague is in the north. Prague has huge Ugal influence and huge Ugal population. So this is very fitting. And once we have five tech from above, as well as the city of Prague, we can pick any of the six below, starting with born in Prague. Everything is 10 turns once again. A childhood spent in the cursed city's cutthroat backstreets makes a man of someone years before they officially come of age. Hero action success chance increase 5%. And then we have Griffon Lodge Secrets. Griffons are the elite cavalry units, and Kislev's elite fighting force are the keepers of the specialist martial knowledge, which set them well apart from their nearest rivals. And we get 15% weapon strength for the Griffon Legion units. And then we have Siege Mentality. A city that has withstood near constant beleaguerment throughout its history produces citizens of a particular mindset always ready to take up the life or death struggle once more. And this is plus four melee defense when under siege for all units, 15% ammunition boost for Kosar, Armor Kosar, Strozzi, Ice Guard, Horse Archer units, and then a 10% reload time reduction when under siege. So the ammo is just added, the other two are under siege. And then we have a Blast Scavenger. Survival in the barren, inhospitable oblast requires stamina and tenacity found in few other men. And we actually get a 10% chance of post-battle stealing a magical item, which I guess for scavenger here, I guess that makes sense. And then we have Earthstone. Spirit of ancient and loyal war bears are drawn to carved Earthstones that are planted in the ground to power the elemental force that protects the motherland. And we get a 10% discount for the upkeep of elemental bear units. And then finally, we have Orthodoxy Blessed. Banners warded with divine favor ensure that Kislev's warriors always have more than a fighting chance. And we get the banner of the Orthodoxy, which we can equip to our hero or lord. This will give the assigned unit 10 points of melee attack and also enables magical attack for them. So in essence, this is only good on certain characters that don't have magical attack already. So like Ice Witches would be a waste. Catron be a waste. So you kind of want this on maybe Boyar Lords or perhaps Adaman Lords. You could also give it to Patriarch, who I don't think have magical attack, but I could be wrong there. Uh, essentially, there are some characters you don't really want to waste this on. And with that, we have gone over all 57 technologies, and we're going to take a look at all the effects by categories now. So you know what you can expect from the Kizla tech tree in total as you plan out your approach with the tech tree. Faction-wide, you end up getting minus 25% chance of a plague spreading, plus 10% devotion gain from fighting chaos, a 20-point boost of diplomatic relations with the Empire, plus 2 recruitment rank for lords, and plus 1 recruitment rank for infantry and cavalry. 
Then for all provinces, you gain 20 points of growth, minus 25% hallow wood building construction costs, minus 10% resource producing building construction costs, 100% income from trade good producing buildings, 5% income from all buildings, 5% tradable resource produced, 5% income from trade, 25% income from ports, minus 2 corruption, and 500 defensive supplies per turn under siege. And then for all characters, we get plus 10% campaign line of sight and plus 5% hero action success chance. For patriarchs, we get minus 15% hero action cost. And for banners, we just have the banner of the orthodoxy, which gives the 10 points of melee attack and enables magic attack. For all armies, though, we have quite a bit of bonuses with 5% campaign movement range, 2% casualty replenishment rate, 4 points of leadership against Northka, 4% leadership when defending, 4 points of melee defense against Northka, 4 points of melee defense when defending. So if you combine the defending against Northka, you get 8 points of each, plus 1 local recruitment capacity, plus 2 global recruitment capacity, 15% wins magic reserve when the reserve is increasing, 10% reload time reduction when under siege for all units, and 10% post battle chance of stealing a magic item. For the Ice Court, there is plus 2 Frost Maiden Hero Capacity, and for Commandments, we have changes to Relief Column, which changes the Recruitment Cost Discount from minus 10% to minus 15%, Awaken the Land, which increases the Income Bonus from 5% to 7%, and Purge the Steps, which gives us a minus 2 Corruption Reduction. Finally, for the 4 Invocations for the Motherland Mechanic, we have Urson, which gives 5 points of Melee Defense, Tor, which gives 3% Melee Attack, Salyak, which gives 10 points of growth, 2 points of control, and 7% casualty replenishment, and Dodds, which give 5% trade, 4% boost to income from buildings, and the summon elemental bear ability. Then for individual units, we start with the Kursars, which get 4 points of melee defense, and the 10% missile resistance once you reach rank 7 or higher, 25% ammo boost, and 10% reload time reduction. Armor Kursars will get the same 10% missile resistance once you hit rank 7 or higher, 25% ammunition, and 10% reload time reduction. Czar Guards only get plus 4 points of leadership, poor guys. Strozzi's get the same 10% missile resistance once you hit rank 7, 25% ammo boost, and 10% reload time reduction. Ice Guards also get the conditional 10% missile resistance and 25% ammunition. Horse Archers get 5% missile resistance straight up and 15% ammunition boost. Kozovite Darvishes will also get the 5% missile resistance, Wing Lancer will pick up 10 points of armor, Griffon Legions will get 15% weapon strength, and War Bears will pick up the Frenzy trait which will give them 10% damage for both base and armor piercing, 10% charge bonus, 8 points of melee attack, and immune to psychology as long as they maintain half of their base leadership value. And then for War Sleds we get 10 points of armor and 15% ammunition, Snow Leopards will get 15% weapon strength, Elemental Bears, the real winner here, 5% physical resistance, 10 points of melee attack, 12% casualty replenishment rate, and minus 10% upkeep. So if you're playing Boris, who has a ton of skills that boost Elemental Bears, including a regeneration skill in battle, they're going to be insane. So definitely consider playing sort of a doom stack of Elemental Bears with Boris. It should be quite fun when you play as Kislev. And then Little Grom, 15% range, enable flaming attack, and 15% ammo on top of that. And that's going to wrap it up for our Kislev Tech Tree Guide. Hopefully you found it helpful enough to drop a like. And also comment below of which faction's tech tree you want to see me cover next. So until then, bye!